They're off in Fort Erie. Bell Femme broke very sharply. Vermont Holiday coming up to press. And up the rail is Cosmic Shot showing good early speed. Cosmic Shot is now a neck better than Vermont Holiday. Bell Femme after the rapid break is dropped back. Into third is Chance Worth Taking with our Stormy Sophia on the outside. They race into the turn. It's a duel up front. Cosmic Shot on the rail with Vermont Holiday right there in the two path. Chance worth taking is well, well spotted in third, one and a half off the leaders, five lengths clear of Belle Femme and our Stormy Sophia. The quarter was 23 and one. The top three have separated themselves. It's Cosmic Shot on top, Vermont Holiday in the two path, and now swinging out wide is Chance Worth taking to make a bid. Vermont Holiday has a head in front. Chance Worth taking coming down the outside, and Cosmic Shot still trying on the rail. It's well back to the rest. Chance Worth taking on the far outside. She's drifting out, but she has a head in front. Vermont Holiday trying to keep going from second. Cosmic Shot is tired, but as they come down to the wire, Chance Worth taking is going to get the job done at three to five. Chance worth taking then Vermont Holiday. Belfem was up into third over Cosmic Shot in a minute and four fifths. They're off. Determinator got out well from the middle hiatus is showing speed and calming influence is also going to be forwardly placed. Soberano is mid pack, Giant Mine is under a hold and the early trailer will be federal law. They go into the clubhouse turn. It is hiatus who's cleared to the early lead. He's got about one and a half lengths over calming influence and Determinator who races a pair. And then at the back are the trio of federal law who's making a wide rush. Then we have Soberano and Giant Mine at the back. Three quarters of a mile to go. The opening quarter was 24 flat, and it is Hiatus, who's two lengths clear. Determinator is sitting from second. Federal Law is into third on the outside. Saving ground from fourth is Calming Influence, a length better than Soberano, and then two and a half back to Giant Mine. Midway down the back stretch, it is still Hiatus on top. Calming Influence has gained ground and now splitting horses is Soberano. Determinator is fourth on the outside. Federal Law back into fifth with Giant Mine still at the back. The field is spread out by about seven lengths. It's still Hiatus on top. Hiatus has a two length lead. Soberano is second with Determinator out in the three path. Calming Influence asks for a little more from fourth. Then Federal Law and Giant Mine is tailed off at the back. Three quarters and one thirteen flat. Hiatus is led from the onset. He has to make another quarter mile. He's up by two and a half, into second, Soberano. Determinator is third, but he's not making up much ground. It's well back to calming influence. Hiatus's lead is up to five. He's getting stronger as they go. Soberano is second, Determinator is third, and then calming influence. But the longer they go, the further away Hiatus gets. Hiatus is up by six, and he's just getting better as they come down to the wire. It is all Hiatus. Hiatus wins easily, Soberano a clear second best, Determinator third, and then Calming Influence, 144 and 4. They're off. Synchromesh broke a little slowly from the middle Union Colonel and here comes Maito from the outside also showing speed on the rail is Silent Fire. Then we have Patio Party on the outside of Samuel H and it's a gap of two and a half back to Synchromesh. They go into the clubhouse turn. It's the gray Silent Fire a half length better than Union Colonel who's on the outside from second. 
Third on the outside is Mayito with Samuel H racing to his inside. Then it's one and a half back to Patio Party, who only has Synchromesh beaten as they go into the backstretch. The quarter was 23 and 4. Silent Fire still has a head lead over Union Colonel. Samuel H is into third on the inside. On the outside and fourth is Mayito. Now Synchromesh swings to the far outside to begin gaining ground, and Patio Party is now the trailer. Midway down the backstretch, the half was 48 and 3. Union Colonel sticks ahead in front of Silent Fire. Making a big rush on the outside, Synchromesh is right into contention. Maido races between horses with Samuel H on the rail. Patio Party is only about four lengths off the leader. They're a pretty tightly bunched up group. It's still a duel up front. Union Colonel is now a three quarters of a length better than Silent Fire. Samuel H is third. Synchromesh begins to tire after making that wide rally. Patio Party swings wide, passing Maido, but at the top of the stretch, it is Union Colonel on top. Union Colonel is three lengths better than Samuel H. Silent Fire is tired. Patio Party tries to rally from the back, but it is Union Colonel. Union Colonel is on top and extending the lead. He's up by about six. It's Union Colonel. He's going to be much the best in the third. Union Colonel and Amanda Vandermeer Samuel H was second, Silent Fire held third over Maito, 140 and 2. All set for the fourth. They're off. Ascot Bay stumbled at the start and dismounted Omar Marino. Marino is up and walking though. Going out for the early lead is Mr. Dynamic. To his inside is High Reserve. On the outside, Wicked Crazy is third with the loose horse beginning to get into the pack. Along the rail from fourth, that is Innuendo and the early trailer is going to be Street Max. They race around the clubhouse turn. It's Mr. Dynamic, a neck better than high reserve on the rail. Then it's about four back to Wicked Crazy from third in front of Innuendo and Street Max now trails as they turn into the backstretch. 23 and one for the opening quarter. It's still Mr. Dynamic and high reserve dueling on the lead. The loose horse tries to come up there inside. We go back about three lengths to Wicked Crazy and now Innuendo is into third and another one and a half back to Street Max who continues to trail. The loose horse is now well clear of the pack. On top, Mr. Dynamic is ahead better than High Reserve. Innuendo and Wicked Crazy have gotten into contention. They're just a length off the lead, and now both of them are storming. Wicked Crazy is making a big sweeping move to the lead as they go into the turn. The complexion has changed. Wicked Crazy is the new leader, and Innuendo is right there in second. They're now two or three clear of High Reserve and Mr. Dynamic. Street Max angles wide to get going from the back. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're on the rail, please angle wide. Just get away from the rail as a precaution of the loose horse coming our way at the top of the stretch it is now wicked crazy wicked crazy and innuendo the stable mates are one two at the head of the lane street max is into third wicked crazy a length or two better than the stable mate innuendo these two have opened up about four on street max with an eighth of a mile to go wicked crazy trying to hold off innuendo she's going comfortably under helen vanek it's wicked crazy he's up by about three under wraps it is wicked crazy to the wire Innuendo was second, then Street Max, High Reserve, and Mr. Dynamic, 145 and 4. They're off. Super Brew was out a little slowly, but otherwise the start was good. Royal Biz is going to for the lead from the rail. 
Cora is showing speed with jocularity between them. Then it's a length and a half back to Nada Game. Another length and a half to Paperback Hero with Mammoth Spring to his outside. And the trailer is going to be Super Brew. They race down the back stretch and approach the turn. Less than a half mile to go. It's Royal Biz on top, a length over jocularity. Cora is third out in the three path, one and a half better than Paperback Hero, who's found his way to the rail with not a game on the outside and Mammoth Spring in sixth. And then it's a gap of seven back to Super Brew. The quarter was 22 and four. Royal Biz continues to lead the way. Jocularity is second. Not a game is out wide, but he's making up ground. Passing Cora, Paperback Hero on the rail, Mammoth Spring not responding, and well back to Super Brew. A half and 46 flat there midway down the stretch. Royal Biz is on the lead and he's responding. Not a game trying to get into second past Jocularity and Paperback Hero finishing up the inside. Coming down to the wire, it's Royal Biz on top. Royal Biz is holding. Royal Biz wins. Not a game was into second, then Jocularity and Paperback Hero, 105 and 3. They're off. The favorite, Eratik, missed the start. She is last early. Showing speed up the rail as hasn't hit me yet. Blonde Attitude is close. Cassie's Rainbow. Martini Sue on the outside. And now making a big rush after that slow break is Eratik. Eratik has made a big rush. She's cleared. She's a length on top. Hasn't hit me yet is second. Misty Blonde third on the outside. Blonde Attitude begins to drop back, being passed by Cassie's Rainbow and Martini Sue. And the trailer is Fleck. 23 and 2 for the opening quarter into the wind. It is Eratik, two lengths on top of Hasn't Hit Me Yet, who comes just off of the rail now. Miss T Blonde is third. Blonde Attitude moving well from fourth. One and a half better than Cassie's Rainbow, who's asked for a little more. Martini Sue is sixth, and Fleck continues to trail. With a quarter of a mile to go, Eratik has still maintained the lead, 47 and 3 for the half, but here comes Hasn't Hit Me Yet to stick her head in front. It is Hasn't Hit Me Yet and Helen Vanek in the lead. Eratik is tired after that big rush. Blonde Attitude needs to get going. Trying to make up some ground is Cassie's Rainbow, but this is all Hasn't Hit Me Yet. Hasn't Hit Me Yet is delivering a knockout blow to the sixth race field. Hasn't hit me yet by about six. Fleck rallied from last to get up through second. Blonde Attitude and Miss T Blonde, 112 and 2. They're off. They've broken a very good line. Showing speed from the middle is Cozy Cat. Also showing up along the inside is Lime. Out wide, Cinderella's in position, and now my final trick emerges in the early scrum too. There's four of them going for the lead, but Lime is coming out on top. It's Lime a length better than my final trick. Cozy Cat takes back to third, then Cinderella's fourth. New York Mint is fifth, ever so to wild on the outside in sixth. Then at the back, we have Stormy Susie and Golden Garter. The quarter was 22 and four. Lime is setting the pace and my final trick is right there from second. Cindervella is into third, ahead better than Cozy Cat and now ever so to wild swings to the outside. She's making a rally out in the four path. New York Mint coming up the rail as they turn for home. My final trick has put ahead in front of Lime but here comes ever so to wild down the outside. My final trick trying to hold off ever so to wild but ever so to wild goes right on by. It's ever so to wild and Juan Crawford getting away from my final trick. The battle is for the miners, ever so to wild, 
in a rallying win. Five final tricks second, then Cindervella. A photo for fourth, 59 and four. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fort Erie Racetrack on a cloudy Tuesday evening. We had plenty of rain earlier in the day, but it seems to have subsided. Because of the rain, we are off the turf today. The main track is sloppy. It's currently 20 degrees Celsius or 69 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have a bit of a wind coming from the south. Be sure to check out our website, FortErieRacing.com. If you can't make it to the track, you can get live video streaming of all the races. And you can also find all of our race replays. Tune into the pre-race show to get info about the track conditions, changes on the program, handicapping selections, and info about upcoming races and events. Racing resumes next week at Fort Erie with our fall schedule. We'll be having 105 post time on both Monday and Tuesday. If you're on track with us tonight, be sure to stick around after the races. We have a free concert featuring Split Second in their only Fort Erie performance this summer. Free concert sponsored by Ray Rosatani, Remax Niagara Realty. 
Honeymoon Suite will be performing at Fort Erie on Saturday, September 17th, featuring Leo Marlene and The Trip. This is a special ticketed fundraiser for COPE. You can get your tickets now at customer service or online at eventbrite.ca. We love Fort Erie Night, sponsored by Fort Erie Rona. Be sure to come out to the races on Monday for Labor Day. We have the Puss in Boots Cup, one of our favorite traditions here at Fort Erie. The winning connections will be taking the plunge into the infield pond. The post-position draw for the Prince of Wales Stakes will be held on Thursday, September 8th at 12 p.m. Come out to the track for that. If you can't make it out, you can check out the live stream at FortErieRacing.com. And on that note, the 87th running of the Prince of Wales Stakes, second jewel in the OLG Canadian Triple Crown, will be held on Tuesday, September 13th. First post is 105. Be sure to book your table for the Turfside Dining Room open on live racing days. Reservations are strongly recommended. Become a member of HPIBet.com today. Get $100 when you bet $100, plus your first bet is on us. Tune in to Your TV Niagara for the Fort Erie Race Replay Show, Channel 700, Thursdays and Saturdays at 10 p.m. The early pick four pool is guaranteed at $7,500 today. That starts in race two. And the late pick five starts in race four. That pool also guaranteed at $7,500. Jackpot High Five carryover is building race eight today. Carryover amount is $14,863.63. Smoking is allowed in designated areas only at Fort Erie Racetrack. No food or beverage is permitted in these areas and no cannabis is allowed on the property. Coming up next are today's race changes. No changes in race one. Race two, we have an overweight. Number five free speech is one pound over at 121 pounds. Race three, overweight on the number five, Baby Luna, three pounds over at 123 pounds. And number six, Classy Mistress, one pound over at 121 pounds. Race four is off the turf, will be contested at five furlongs on the main track. Number one, ready at dawn, one pound overweight at 119 pounds. Steward Scratch, the number four, twice as smart. Also Steward Scratched is the number five, Crumlin Experience. Overweight on the number seven, Hey Mickey, two pounds over at 120 pounds. And also eligible, number nine, Dance for Gold, will draw in. Race five, Vet Scratch the number four, Diamondback. In race six, overweight on the number two, Artie's All In, two pounds over at 120 pounds. Overweight on the number three, MC Jackhammer, one pound over at 119 pounds. And an overweight on the number six, Jamaican Jimmy, five pounds over at 123 pounds. Race seven is off the turf, will be contested at five furlongs on the main track. Steward scratched the number one, Benedette's Lady. Also steward scratched is the number three, Swirling Candy. Overweight on the number four, Silent Guru, one pound over at 121 pounds. Vet scratched the number six, eight speed. And steward scratched the number eight, Capoeira. Race 8, Vet Scratch the number 5, Correlate. Steward Scratch the number 6, Ace Destroyer. And an overweight on the number 8, Perlorana, 3 pounds over at 123 pounds. And I'm joined today by our marketing manager, Antonetta Kulik. We're going to talk about the upcoming Labor Day festivities here at Fort Erie Racetrack. What do we have going on on Labor Day, Antonetta? We have a lot of fun coming up this weekend. Uh, of course, we have the Puss in Boots race. This is a very fun tradition at Fort Erie Racetrack, one of my favorite races that comes with a really interesting story. So let me tell you a little bit about it. Back in 1961, so about 60 years ago now, there was a horse named Puss in Boots. He was uh, winning the race at the top of the stretch, but he had a little bit of a mischievous, you know, 
personality. And of course, winning the race, he decided, I don't want to finish this race anymore. Jumped the rail and jumped right into the infield pond. Lost the jockey in the process. Jockey jumped in to save him, couldn't get him out. The trainer jumped in, couldn't get him out. It took 45 minutes to get Puss in Boots out of the water. Uh, but everyone was safely rescued, of course. So, uh, you know, happy ending. But it's been a little bit of a tradition ever since. So we've uh, run the Puss in Boots race uh, Labor Day weekend every, every year since then. But in 1996, it got a little bit more interesting. Owner Robert Elkin said uh, his boot, uh, horse in that race was dancing for beans. And he said, if my horse wins, I'm going to jump into the lake just like Puss in Boots. So, of course, uh, Francine Villeneuve was a jockey on that race. She was inspired by the story. She took the, uh, the horse from last place to first. And uh, Robert Elkins plunged into the lake after the uh, same way Puss in Boots did. So now, every year since, that's been the tradition. The winning connections, be it the owner, the trainer, the jockey, someone jumps into the Puss in Boots Lake after just the way we did 60 years ago. So uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's an exciting tradition here at Fort Erie Racetrack, and it's a fan favorite for sure. Uh, here we have some photos of you know, some previous jumps. But we're really excited about this, uh, the race this year. So if you haven't been, or if you love the tradition, come on out Labor Day weekend, uh, Monday, September 5th, for our annual Puss in Boots race and jump. And of course, we have some exciting uh, events happening that day as well. We have our vendor market here on site, so you can shop the vendors between the races. We also have uh, Fort Erie LaFrance Association. They're going to be here with their antique fire trucks, so you can go and peruse those, climb on board, take a look at those very beautiful trucks. And uh, another exciting race we've done here a few times. Have you seen the T-Rex races? I have seen the T-Rex races. Looking forward to announcing those, like the dog races we had earlier this season. We An interesting twist. They are fun. They'll be happening between the races coming up. Here's a little preview from uh, 2019. A lot of fun. So come on out, bring the family. It's a great day. Uh, you know, have some fun before the start of school on Tuesday and enjoy our fun events like the T-Rex races and the Puss in Boots Cup. Yeah, the Puss in Boots Cup is one of my personal favorite events on the Fort Erie calendar. I look forward to it every year, so I'm very excited for that to come up on um, Labor Day next week. Uh, Antonetta, thanks for joining us, and looking forward to everything on Monday. Thank you. So with that, we should get into our handicapping for today's eight-race card. We're off the turf. As a reminder, the main track is sloppy today. Race one is a claiming race for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have never won three races. Claiming price of 8000 down to seven. And we're going to go one mile and one sixteenth on the main track. My selections here are five, two, and three. Number five, Princess Moro has been in some tough spots this season. She's either been racing against the boys or in the non-winners of four category, and she's been racing well lately. She was just beat a half length behind Gizmo's Princess, who's in very good form. She was finishing very nicely in that race. And Princess Moro has a good record over a wet track. She ran a good second in the slop last fall. So I'm expecting a good run from Princess Morrow. Number two, Pure Elegance, came off of a layoff and ran in the slop on August 8th in a sprint. Was a well-beaten fourth as the favorite that day. Probably better around two turns and figures to be a speed factor here. Speed can be very good in the slop with the stretch out and distance. Pure Elegance is a logical option. And then the wild card in the race is number three, Rain by Rain who was claimed back in July by the Daryl Ezra Barn in a winning race on the turf. She was a very comfortable winner in that race. Has been scratched a couple of times in unideal spots and now tries the dirt. Rain by Rain never been on the dirt before. We don't know how she will handle the slop, but she did look very good in that July 17th win. Race two is a starter optional claiming race for three-year-olds and up, which have started for a claiming price of 4,000 or less in the last two years, or going for a claiming price of 8,000. We're going to sprint five and one half furlongs over the main track here. My selections are one, five, and six. Number one, Silence Breakers. Ships down from Woodbine. This was once a highly thought of young horse, and he did have talent, but he's slowed down a little bit as he's gotten older. He is quick out of the gate, which is good for a sloppy track, and he's taking a massive class drop. He was racing for 25000 earlier this season at Woodbine. Takes the plunge in for 8000 If he gets out of the gate well and doesn't hate the slop, Silence Breakers should be the one to beat. Number five, Free Speech. He's been, to, he's been in Ontario before. I believe he maybe came from BC originally with Steve Bryant, but recently has been in Ohio racing at Mahoning Valley, Thistledown, Belterra, was claimed by the Elliott Sullivan Barn at Thistledown back in June. He's fast out of the gate. He has a very good record in his career, loves a wet track, and he's in pretty good form lately. He hasn't run since the end of July. It's been over a month. 
and he's had to ship up from Cincinnati. But free speech figures to race well here. And then number six, Glitter Mountain. Was an okay fourth in the slop last week behind Jack Beanstalk. This is not, I wouldn't call this a much easier group, but there's lots of speed here. Glitter Mountain can make a good run from mid-pack and has a good record over a sloppy track. Race three is an allowance race for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have never won three races. We're going to go six and one half furlongs over the main track. My selections here are one, six, and two. Number one is Super Chianti, won a five furlong race against non-winners of two on August 14th. Was pretty comfortable that day despite only winning by a length. I thought it was a pretty easy win. The buyer number came up a little low for that win. She might have to improve numbers wise here, but it's her second start off of a bit of a layoff. She clearly took to the Fort Erie surface. The slop is the biggest concern, but she didn't run badly in the slop at Churchill back in May against much tougher company. Number six, Classy Mistress. Terrific closing sprinter. I know she won by 16 lengths last year in an allowance race, but that was a pretty weak field. I think this one really wants to make a big late run sprinting. And she ran great last week in the slop, looked completely hopeless at the top of the stretch and flew down the outside, was second behind letting loose. That was a boys race, this is a girls race. If she can make that same late kick coming back in a week, I expect Classy Mistress to be right there at the finish. And then number two, Princess Helene. Tried a quarter mile race in her first start off of the claim on August 8th. Didn't run badly for a horse that figured to have no shot in a quarter mile race. Now gets into a more ideal spot, stretches out to six and one half furlongs. The blinkers are added for her first real try over the Fort Erie dirt. She did win on dirt at Hastings last year. Race four is a claiming race for three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races. We are off the turf, the claiming price of $5,000 down to $4,750. we are going to go five furlongs on the main track now. My selections are two, one, and eight. Number two, Verrazano Legacy kicked off his season in a maiden special weight race on August 1st for trainer Pat Perante, made an easy lead and was never threatened. We had a next out winner in that race. Devil in her heart came back to beat a soft group of maiden fillies. Verrazano Legacy was left here in Fort Erie with the Claudia Rabstein Barn, who's had some recent success. Aggressively spotted for $5,000 after being scratched for $62.50 last week. If Verrazano Legacy makes the lead, he should be tough to outfinish. Number one, Ready at Dawn, was in an off turf race on August 22nd. Ran a good second behind Wanafrak, who had an easy lead that day. Ready at Dawn is an extreme up and down horse. You never really know what you're going to get with him. But it's clear that on his best day, he can win at this level. It's just a matter of whether he wants to. And then number eight, Artie, my boy. He was third in the same race that Ready at Dawn was in. Tried to press Wanafrak early. Could not match that one speed and gave way a little bit in the stretch. But at least he proved he can handle the slop. So Artie, my boy, a logical contender here. Race five is a claiming race for three-year-olds and up, which have never won three races. Claiming price of $62.50 down to six, and we're gonna go six and one half furlongs on the main track. My selections here are two, seven, and eight. Number two, strong attitude, cuts back in distance after winning going a mile and 70 yards a couple of weeks ago. He was in the slop that day, made the lead, and was able to hold off a stubborn cinnamon jawbreaker. I don't mind the cutback in distance for Strong Attitude. He had a couple of decent sprint races earlier in the season. He proved he likes the slop here. Makes his first start off the claim for trainer Ken Smith and owner Radcliffe Racing Stable, who is doing well this meet. Number seven, Invisible Friend, is probably the horse to beat here. I do like this horse a lot in this spot. Raced in the slop on August 8th. Was a clear second best behind Dr. Wu, who figured to be tough, but inherited the win through a disqualification. So Invisible Friend drops in for $62.50 off of that win, which is a logical move. They've made their money with this horse already. He likes to slop to one to beat on the class drop. And then number eight, Wild River Wolf, a stable mate to Invisible Friend, was second best for $5,000 on August 2nd. He's racing well enough. The slop is an unknown, but he's doing well enough in Fort Erie that you have to give him a shot. Race six is an allowance race for three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races. We're going to sprint six furlongs on the main track. My selections here are four, six, and five. Horse we just talked about, Dr. Wu. He came down to Fort Erie off of the claim on August 8th. 
popped the gate open a little early but ended up last because of it. He kind of jumped up after he popped the gate. Won easily, drew clear in the stretch. It was about as easy as you can ask a horse to win, but because he opened the gate early, he was de declared an unfair starter. If he can run back to that race, he's going to beat these horses. He's a nice horse. His win at Woodbine first time out was so impressive. He raced well for 25000 there, again, and he proved he likes the slop. So Dr. Wu, the clear one to beat here. Number six, Jamaican Jimmy has done well in his three-start career so far. He looked good in his maiden win on June 28th, dueled on the lead on July 25th, and just gave way in a good group. Bahamian dude, voyant, invisible friend. That's a good group for that level. If he likes the slop, I see no reason why Jamaican Jimmy shouldn't put in another good run. And then number five, we want action. Annihilated the field in his debut win July 26th. He was so much the best. Came back two weeks later in the slop, dropped back to last, and just couldn't threaten Dr. Wu. He's had a few weeks now, 22 days between races, which should be beneficial. He's still lightly raced, still could improve. I don't think you should ignore him. Race seven is a starter optional claiming race for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have started for 5,000 or less in the last two years, or claiming price of 10,000. Off the turf, so this will now be five furlongs on the main track, and we are scratched down to a field of four. My selections here are five, seven, and two. Number five, Gimbala, raced in the slop two weeks ago, was second best behind a nice Ohio invader, Pau de Queso. Gimbala, she's seven years old. She's a stone runner. Great lifetime record. Nine wins, 11 seconds in her life. Likes the sloppy track. She doesn't run too often anymore, but when she does, she usually shows up with a good effort. I like Gimbala in the slop here. Number seven, High Society Girl, another one with a proven good record over a sloppy track. She has two wins in the slop, albeit against what should be easier company. She won for 6,000 on August 16th. She has some speed, has a good outside draw in the small field. I expect her to show up here. And then number two, Frerit. I loved this horse when this race was still on the turf. She looked like she was going to get a perfect trip, but I don't know what to make of her in the slop. She's in great form, won an allowance race very easily a few weeks ago, was racing well at Woodbine before that. The slop is the biggest question with Frerit. Last race of the day, starter optional claiming race for three-year-olds and up, which have started for 5,000 or less in the last two years, or going for a claiming price of 10,000. We're gonna go six and one half furlongs on the main track. And we have a nice group of boys here. My selections are one, four, and two. Number one, Dilettante, came up to Fort Erie on August 2nd, in a race at this level, the optional 10 claimer. Won pretty comfortably, then raced in Ohio two weeks later in an allowance race. Win even third, it wasn't great, it wasn't bad. The horse that won is like an Ohio bred stakes winner, not a bad horse at all. Dilettante has a good record in the, over a wet track. If he shows up again, I think he'll be the horse to beat. Number four, Jack Beanstalk, raced two weeks ago at this level. Was forwardly placed and finished best, beating Tragically Quick and Fa Fa Fui, who both show up here. Another one, never missed the top three in four tries over a wet track, and he's got that early speed, so you have to give him the shot to double up. And then a bit of a long shot for the bottoms, number two, the only solution, was beaten the nose on the turf on August 2nd. Won easily in the slop at a much lower level last fall. That was back when he won his 4,000 non-winners of two. He's got that speed out of the gate. We know he can run in the slop. His last race was very good. And Leo Salas is riding very hot right now. So that's a look at our eight race card today. Looking forward to getting the action going over this sloppy track. We have 13 minutes to post for race number one.
It's easy to make a bet on HPIBet.com. Follow these simple steps and you'll be betting in no time. First, go to the HPIBet.com website. Sign in to your HPI Bet account. Find the track and race you want to bet on. Click on the Place Bet button. Click on the bet type you want to wager with. Click on the amount you want to wager. Click on the horse you want to wager on. Click on the green Place Bet button. Review your bet confirmation information. It's all done. Remember, all this can be done on most mobile devices. Now cheer on your pick to victory. Horses are making their way on track for today's first race. Race one is a claiming race for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have never won three races. Going for a claiming price of $8,000 down to $7,000. Traveling one mile and one sixteenth on the main track. Race one offers win, play, show, exactor, 20 cent try, double, 20 cent super, 20 cent pick three, and 20 cent early pick five wagering.
Leading the post parade, number one is Coco Tara. Brandon Boulanger rides for owner trainer Richard Davis. Number two is Pure Elegance. Pierre Mailhot rides. This one also goes for trainer Richard Davis, owner Bruno Schickadans. Number three is Rain by Rain. Chris Husbands rides for trainer Daryl Ezra and owner Julia Ezra. Four is Doodle Dandy. Isabel Wentz rides for trainer Lindsay Hode, who owns in partnership with Joseph Hode. And number five is Princess Moro. Emil Ram Sammy has the call for trainer Bill McMahon and owner Janelle McMahon. Four minutes to post for race number one. Starting gate taking position, we have two minutes to post. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're on track, take note that on the infield tote board, it currently says we are on race number seven. That is obviously incorrect. We are working to have that fixed. The minutes to post and time of day are correct, and we have one minute to post for race number one.
Race one field is behind the starting gate. It is post time. Even money as we get set to load is number five, Princess Morrow. Pure Elegance and Rain by Rain also taking action. First to go up will be Coco Tara with Brandon Boulanger to the rail. The other Richard Davis runner, Pure Elegance with Pierre Mailhot aboard to gate two. Rain by Rain and Chris Husbands. Rain by Rain goes up. Doodle Dandy with Isabel Wentz to gate four. And last up will be Princess Morrow with Emil Ram Sammy. Princess Morrow goes up and we are all set. They're off in Fort Erie. Rain by Rain got out well from the center. Coco Tara also showing up from the rail. Then we have Pure Elegance and Princess Morrow racing as a pair and the early trailer is going to be Doodle Dandy. They go into the clubhouse turn. It is Coco Tara about a half length better than Rain by Rain on the outside. These two have opened up three on Pure Elegance who's on the rail with Princess Morrow to the outside and fourth. And then a gap of six to Doodle Dandy at the back. The opening quarter was 23 and two. They are dueling up front. Coco Terra on the lead with uh, Rain by Rain right there in second. They've opened up five. Pure Elegance is third, a length better than Princess Morrow, and then still another six back to Doodle Dandy with five eighths of a mile to go. The complexion has not changed. Coco Terra and Rain by Rain breathing down each other's throats. They went the half in 47 and two. They're still going well. In third, Pure Elegance has a good trip. He's opened up, she's opened up three on Princess Morrow and Doodle Dandy begins to creep closer. They go into the far turn, Rain by Rain and Coco Tara still going at it. Pure Elegance is inching closer from third, opening up, uh, opening up on Princess Morrow. Doodle Dandy still at the back as they approach the 5 16th pole. Rain by Rain is now a half length better than Coco Tara. Three quarters and one 13 and one. Pure Elegance swings to the three path with a quarter of a mile to go and Doodle Dandy is finishing up nicely from the back. It's Rain by Rain. Coco Tara tries to come back on on the rail. Pure Elegance is there and Doodle Dandy out in the four path. They're four across the track with an eighth of a mile to go. It is Doodle Dandy down the far outside. Doodle Dandy has gone last to first and is getting away from them. It is Doodle Dandy and Isabel Wentz. They're going to go on to an easy win in the opener. Doodle Dandy, a fast, a re-breaking Princess Morrow couldn't get up to pure elegance for second. Rain by Rain was fourth. 149 flat. Unofficial in race one, the winner is number four, Doodle Dandy. Second was number two, Pure Elegance. Third is number five, Princess Morrow. And fourth, number three, Rain by Rain. Unofficial race one order is four, two, five, three.
Race one is now official. Returning to the walking ring winner's circle, the official race one winner, number four, Doodle Dandy. Doodle Dandy is a five-year-old Dark Bayer Brown mare by Nonios out of Miss Yankee. Bred in Ontario by Colebrook Farms. Ridden to victory today by Isabel Wentz for trainer Lindsay Hode, who part owns with Joseph Hode. That's a second lifetime win for Doodle Dandy in start number 27. She covered the mile in 1 16th in 149 flat. Prices are up for race one. The winner, number four, Doodle Dandy, an upset, 39.20, 8.80, and 6.60. Number two, Pure Elegance, 3.60 and 2.40. And number five, Princess Moro, 2.40. The $2 exacta, 4 $2, $142.50. $1 dollar try, 4 2 5, $332.90. And the $1 Super, four two five three, four hundred and seventy six dollars and sixty cents. Seventy five hundred dollar guaranteed early pick four coming up in the second. We have twenty minutes to post. We had a claim in race number one. Number five, Princess Morrow, was trained by new owner trainer, Kevin Buttigieg. Be sure to book your table for the Turfside Dining Room open on live racing days. Reservations are strongly recommended. Changes for the upcoming second race, just an overweight. The number five, Free Speech, is one pound over. Make the weight 121 pounds. 19 minutes to post for race number two.
Horses are making their way on track for today's second race. Race two is a starter optional claiming race for three-year-olds and up, which have started for a claiming price of $4,000 or less in the last two years, or going for a claiming price of $8,000. We're sprinting five and one-half furlongs on the main track. Race two offers win, play, show, exactor, 20-cent try, double, 20-cent super, 20-cent pick three, and 20 cent pick four wagering with a pool guaranteed at $7,500. Take note that in race two, number one silence breakers and number three torpedo max will wear inserts. Inserts on numbers one and three. Post parade for race two, number one is Silence Breakers. Isabel Wentz rides for trainer Ralph Biamont and owner Mary Biamont. Number two is Awesome Minor. Melanie Pinto in the saddle for trainer Mickey Neubauer and owner Carl Norris. We'll come back to the three. Number four is Stribbling. Amanda Vandermerch rides for trainer George Newland and owners Christina Ramjatin and Merrill Morgan. Number five is Free Speech. Helen Vanek pi pilots for trainer Elliot Sullivan and owner Bruno Schickadans. Number six is Glitter Mountain. Chris Husbands rides for trainer Desmond Maynard and owner Chris Steve. Number three, Torpedo Max is still in the paddock. We will show him once he is out on track. Currently two minutes to post for race two, $7,500 guaranteed. Early pick four starts here. And on track now is number three, Torpedo Max. Juan Crawford rides for trainer Howard Keane and owner, owner Fortunato Galati. Horses are still warming up for race number two. You have some more time to get your wagers in.
Starting gate taking position at the five and one half furlong mark. Not too much time left to get your race two wagers in. Set to begin loading for race number two, it is post time. Co-favorites on the board are number one, Silence Breakers, and number five, Free Speech. Silence Breakers will go up first with Isabel Wentz, who's looking for a riding double. Awesome Minor with Melanie Pinto to gate two. Stribbling comes up next with Amanda Vandermerch. Walks up. Free speech in from Ohio with Helen Vanek aboard. Outside gate will be Glitter Mountain with Chris Husbands. Glitter Mountain goes up. And the last to load will be Torpedo Max with Juan Crawford. All set for the second. They're off. Silence Breakers was out a step slow. Showing speed from the inside is going to be awesome minor. Free Speech is showing up from the outside and Torpedo Max is between them. Stribbling is a length back from the Dueling Trio. Then we go back two to Glitter Mountain and Silence Breakers is the trailer. A half mile to go. It is Awesome Miner on top. A length over Free Speech and Torpedo Max. Sitting fourth on the inside is Stribbling. 22 and two for the opening quarter. It's a gap of about six back to Torpedo Max or to Glitter Mountain and at the back trying to make ground is Silence Breakers. Five sixteenths of a mile to go. Awesome Miner's lead is up to two. Free Speech is into second, passing Torpedo Max. Stribbling looks to come off of the rail. Silence Breakers has overtaken Glitter Mountain. At the top of the stretch, it is still on top. Awesome Miner looking to go wire to wire. Free Speech is into second, finishing well, but he might not be doing enough. Torpedo Max is third, and Stribbling is back to the rail. But as they come down to the wire with a sixteenth of a go, it is all Awesome Miner. Awesome Miner wins easily in the second. Torpedo Max is going to cowl on for second, then Free Speech and Silence Breakers in a photo, 105 and 1. Unofficial in race two, the winner is number two, Awesome Miner. Second is number three, Torpedo Max. We have a photo for show. Hold all tickets until the results of the photo have been posted.
In the show photo, number five, free speech held off number one, silence breakers. So the unofficial race two order is two, three, five, and one. And now returning to the walking ring winner's circle, the unofficial race two winner, number two, Awesome Miner. Awesome Miner is a six-year-old chestnut gelding by Mineshaft out of Awesome Houdini. Bred in Kentucky by Charles Fipke. Ridden to victory today by Melanie Pinto for trainer Mickey Neubauer and owner Carl Norris. That's a sixth lifetime win and 20 starts for Awesome Miner, his second at the meet. He covered the five and one half furlongs today in 105 and one. Race two is official, prices are up. The winner, number two, Awesome Miner, returns seven twenty, four dollars and two fifty. Number three, Torpedo Max, five forty and three thirty. And number five, free speech, two seventy. The two dollar exacta, two three, returns twenty seven dollars and fifty cents. One dollar try, two three five, forty four dollars and sixty five cents. One dollar super. Two three five one, one hundred and fifty five dollars and twenty cents, and the two dollar double four two returns two hundred and eighty three dollars even. Allowance runners coming up in race number three. We have twenty minutes to post. Be sure to come out to the races on Labor Day, Monday, September 5th, where we'll have our annual running of the Puss in Boots Cup. Winning connections will take the plunge into the infield pond. It's always a spectacle. Labor Day, Puss in Boots Cup. Uh, on screen now is the show photo for race number two. Number five, free speech with the nose down over number one. Oh, silence breakers, that was a close photo though. Race two show photo is on screen now. We want to wish a very happy birthday, birthday today to Joanne. Happy birthday, Joanne, from all of your friends and family here at Fort Erie Racetrack. Changes for the upcoming third race, just a couple of overweights. 
Number five, Baby Luna, three pounds over, make the weight 123 pounds. And number six, Classy Mistress, one pound over, make the weight 121 pounds. 18 minutes to post for race number three.
Horses are making their way on track for today's third race. Race three is an allowance race for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have never won three races, going six and one-half furlongs on the main track. Race three offers win, play, show, exactor, 20-cent try, double, 20-cent super, and 20-cent pick three wagering. Take note that in race three, number two, Princess Halim, and number six, Classy Mistress, will both race with inserts. Inserts on numbers two and six. Post parade for race three, number one is Super Chianti. Melanie Pinto rides for trainer Mickey Neubauer and owner Charles Fipke. Number two is Princess Halim. Leo Salas rides for owner trainer Jeff Voice. Number three is Ice Flow. Kirk Johnson in the saddle for trainer Julie Mathis and owner David Mathis. Number four is Katie and Emma. Pierre Mailhot rides for trainer Richard Davis and owner Bruno Schickadans. Number five is Baby Luna. Ishmael Mascara in the saddle for trainer Noel Williams, who owns in partnership with Nick Gaianita. And number six is Classy Mistress. Helen Vanek will pilot for owner-trainer Sam Melly. Two minutes to post for race number three. Race three field is heading into the chute. Not too much time left to get your race three wagers in.
Race three field begins to head behind the starting gate. It is post time. Current favorite at eight to five is number six, Classy Mistress. Princess Halima close second choice at two to one. Super Chianti also taking money at three to one. The first to go up will be Super Chianti and Melanie Pinto. A team of Pinto and Neubauer looking for back-to-back -back wins. Blinkers on Princess Halim today. Leo Sal is aboard her. She goes up. Ice flow off the claim. Kirk Johnson aboard. Baby Luna with Ishmael Mascara to gate five. Katie and Emma and Pierre Mailhot will come up. Katie and Emma goes up. The last to load will be Classy Mistress with Helen Vanek, bet down to even money, now seven to five. Goes in and we are all set. They're off. Katie and Emma got out well from the middle. Uh, Princess Halim is also there, and from the outside, Katie and Emma, and now Baby Luna, up the rail, Saper Chianti. Then we have Ice Flow, and the early trailer, as expected, is going to be Classy Mistress. It's Princess Halim, a length on top of Super Chianti and Katie and Emma. Another two back to Ice Flow and Baby Luna, who races a pair, about five lengths better than Classy Mistress. The opening quarter was, tw was quick, 22-4. and four. It's Princess Halim opening up a three-length lead. Sharing second are Super Chianti and Katie and Emma, two and a half lengths better than Ice Flow with Baby Luna to her outside, and still about five back to Classy Mistress. With three-eighths of a mile to go, it is still Princess Aline freewheeling it on the lead. Her lead is up to five. Super Chianti is a distinct second now over Katie and Emma. The half was quick, 45 and three. Baby Luna passes Ice Flow, and now Classy Mistress comes off the rail to launch her rally, but they still have a lot of work to do to catch Princess Aline. She's up by six. It is Princess Aline, well clear in the stretch. Super Chianti is second, and now Classy Mistress is flying down the outside like she likes to do. Still has about seven lengths to make up on Princess Aline, who looks like she has this all wrapped up. It is Princess Aline, well clear throughout, holding on at the wire. Princess Aline wins. Classy Mistress looks like she just got up for second over Super Chianti. Then Katie and Emma, 119 flat. Unofficial in race three, the winner is number two, Princess Halim, never in doubt. Photo for place, hold all tickets until the results of the photo have been posted. And in the place photo, number six, Classy Mistress got up over number one, Super Chianti. Fourth was number four, Katie and Emma. So the unofficial race three order, two, six, one, four.
Race three is now official. Returning to the walking ring winner's circle, the official race three winner, number two, Princess Halim. Princess Halim is a four-year-old dark bear brown filly by Oxbow out of Moon Dreamer. Bred in Kentucky by Hinkle Farms. Ridden to victory today by Leo Salas for owner-trainer Jeff Voice. Princess Helene puts the blinkers on and scores the third lifetime win, covering the six and one half furlongs in 119 flat. Prices are up for race number three. The winner, number two, Princess Halim, 890, 420, and 220. Number six, Classy Mistress, 320 and 210. And number one, Super Chianti, 210. The $2 exacta, 26, $14.90. $1 try, 261, $13.60. $1 super, 2614. $38.50, the $2 double, a pair of twos, $29.70, and the $1 pick three, $757 even. We're off the turf for race number four, late pick five wagering coming up next, 20 minutes to post. And on screen now is the place photo for race number three. Number six, Classy Mistress getting up over number one, Super Chianti. Race three, place photo on screen now. If you're on track with us today, be sure to stick around after the races. We have a free concert featuring Split Second, their only Ford Erie performance this summer. Free concert sponsored by Ray Rosatani, Remax Niagara Realty. Changes for the upcoming fourth race. Overweight on number one, ready at dawn. One pound over at 119 pounds. Steward Scratch, the number four, twice as smart. Also, Steward Scratched is the number five, Crumlin Experience. Overweight on the number seven, Hey Mickey, two pounds over at 120 pounds. And the also eligible number nine, Dance for Gold, will draw in. Off the turf for race number four, 18 minutes to post.
Horses are making their way on track for today's fourth race. Race four is a claiming race for three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races. Going for a claiming price of 5000 down to 4750 Traveling five furlongs on the main track, we are off the turf here. Race four offers win play show, exactor, 20 cent try, double, 20 cent super, 20 cent pick three, and 20 cent late pack pick five wagering with the pool guaranteed at $7,500. Take note that in the fourth race, number three, Thy Kingdom, will race with inserts. Inserts on the number three. Post parade for race four, number one is Ready at Dawn. Chris Husbands rides for trainer Daryl Ezra and owner Double Blooded Stables. Two is Verrazano Legacy. Ola Fernandez rides for trainer Claudia Rabstein and owner Canny Ng. Number three is Thy Kingdom. Omar Marino in the saddle for trainer Ken Albu and owner Six Brothers Stable. Scratch numbers four and five. We'll come back to the six. Number seven is Hey Mickey. Mark Lee Buchanan rides for trainer Roy Augustino and owner Michael Bellissimo. Eight is Artie My Boy. Leo Salas pilots for trainer Julie Mathis and owner Bruno Schickadans. Number nine is Dance for Gold. Melanie Pinto in the saddle for trainer Julie Mathis and owner David Mathis. And on screen now is number six, Abstemious. Pierre Mailhot rides for trainer Robert Warner who owns in partnership with Nancy Warner. Three minutes to post for race number four. $7,500 guaranteed late pick five kicks off here. Two minutes to post. Starting gate making its way towards the five furlong mark. We have one minute to post for race number four.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have a late scratch being announced here for the first time in race number four. By order of the track veterinarian number nine, Dance for Gold is now scratched. Once again, that's a late vet scratch in this fourth race of number nine, Dance for Gold. Any wagers on number nine will be, wa will be refunded. If you have Dance for Gold and any live multi-race wagers, you will inherit the post time favorite. Once again, in race four, that is a late vet scratch of number nine, Dance for Gold. Field for race four begins to approach the starting gate. This is your last call for any race four wagers. Field for race four is behind the starting gate. It is now post time. The wagering is wide open here. We've got three five to two shots. Number one, Ready at Dawn. Number two, Verrazano Legacy. Number eight, Artie My Boy, all five to two. Also right there is number three, Thy Kingdom at three to one. Any one of these four could be the favorite. Ready at Dawn, the first to go up with Chris Husbands. Verrazano Legacy with Ola Fernandez to gate two. Thy Kingdom, Omar Marino aboard. Hey Mickey with Mark Lee Buchanan. Artie My Boy and Leo Salas have the outside draw. Artie My Boy goes up. Last to load will be Abstemious with Pierre Mailhot. Abstemious goes in and we are all set. They're off. Abstemious broke sharply, ready at dawn, also showing speed, and from the far outside, Artie My Boy is going for position. Then we go back to Verrazano Legacy in Thy Kingdom, and a gap of two and a half to Hey Mickey, who trails in the early stages. Into the turn they go, it's a duel up front, ready at dawn, ahead better than Abstemious, and now Artie My Boy rushes up to join them three wide. Artie My Boy puts ahead in front at the three-eighths pole, sitting in fourth, are Verrazano Legacy in Thy Kingdom, racing as a pair, and then about four lengths back to Hey Mickey. Midway round the turn, the leader is now Artie My Boy. He's out in the three path. He's a length better than Ready at Dawn and Abstemious. Thy Kingdom is wide and Verrazano Legacy tries to rally up the fence, but down the stretch they come. It is Artie My Boy. Ready at Dawn still second. Abstemious tiring. Thy Kingdom coming down the outside and Verrazano Legacy on the rail. Artie My Boy still has the lead. Verrazano Legacy up the rail and here comes Thy Kingdom down the outside, but he's not going to get to Artie My Boy. Artie My Boy wins over Thy Kingdom. Ready at Dawn and then Verrazano Legacy in a minute flat.
Unofficial in race four, the winner is number eight, Artie My Boy. Second was three, Thy Kingdom. Third is number one, Ready at Dawn. And fourth, number two, Verrazano Legacy. Unofficial race four order is eight, three, one, two. And returning to the walking ring winner's circle, the unofficial race four winner, number eight, Artie My Boy. Artie My Boy is a five-year-old bay gelding by strong mandate out of Susie Girl. Bred in Ontario by William Graham. Ridden to victory today by Leo Salas, back-to-back -back riding victories for Leo. Trained by Julie Mathis for owner Bruno Schickadans. That's a second lifetime win in 20 starts for Artie, my boy. He takes to the slop, completing the five furlongs in one minute flat. Race four is official and prices are up. The winner, number eight, Artie My Boy, 480, 290, and 220. Number three, Thy Kingdom, 420 and 250. And number one, Ready at Dawn, 260. The $2 exacta, 8-3, $16 even. The $1 try, 831, $16.40. $1 super. 8312, $28 even. The $2 double, 28, $20.50. The consolation double with the late scratch number nine, $6.60. And the $1 pick three returns $51.90. Late pick four coming up in race number five, 20 minutes to post.
Tune into your TV Niagara for the Ford Erie Race Replay Show, Channel 700, Thursdays and Saturdays at 10 p.m. Racing is back next week at Ford Erie. We're switching to our fall schedule. Monday's post time will remain at 105, and Tuesdays will also begin at 105. Changes for the upcoming fifth race. Vet scratch the number four, Diamondback. 19 minutes to post for race number five.
Horses are making their way on track for today's fifth race. Race five is a claiming race for three-year-olds and up, which have never won three races. Claiming price is $62.50 down to $6,000. Going six and one half furlongs on the main track. Race five offers win play show, exactor, 20 cent try, double, 20 cent super, 20 cent pick three, and 20 cent late pick four wagering. Take note that number six, party of no, will race with inserts. Inserts on the number six. Leading the post parade is number one, Blind Trust. Chris Husbands rides for trainer Claudia Rabstein and owner John Grinsteins. Number two is Strong Attitude. Kirk Johnson rides for trainer Ken Smith. Welcome back to the training ranks, Ken Smith. For owner Radcliffe Racing Stable. Three is Thelonious. Leo Sala is in the saddle for trainer By Raganoff and owners Centennial Farms Niagara Incorporated and John Lennox. Scratch the four. Number five is Rayo, Colorado. Pierre Mailhot pilots for trainer Roy Agostino and owner Michael Bellissimo. Six is Party of No. Omar Marino rides for trainer Barbara Bailey and owner Jennifer Gutierrez. Seven is Invisible Friend. Juan Crawford rides for trainer Julie Mathis and owner David Mathis. And number eight is Wild River Wolf. Ola Fernandez has the call for trainer Julie Mathis and owner Bruno Schickadans. Late pick four wagering coming up in race five. Field is heading into the chute for race five. Last call to get your wagers in. Field for race five, about to head behind the starting gate. It is now post time. 
Seven to five favorite at the moment is number seven, Invisible Friend. First to load is going to be Blind Trust with Chris Husbands. Gate two for Strong Attitude, Kirk Johnson aboard. Thelonious with Leo Salas. Party of No and Omar Marino go up next. The favorite, Invisible Friend with Juan Crawford. Rayo Colorado and Pierre Mailhot go up. And the last to load will be Wild River Wolf with Olaf Fernandez. We're all set. They're off. Thelonious is showing speed, Blind Trust showing up from the rail, between them Strong Attitude, Party of No and from the far outside Wild River Wolf. It's a clustered pace as they come out of the chute. Wild River Wolf ahead on top with Party of No. Between them is Invisible Friend. Blind Trust on the rail. Strong Attitude taking back to track the quartet. Then it's two back to Thelonious. And Rayo Colorado is the early trailer. The quarter was a quick and contested. 22 and 4. They're four across the track. Blind Trust the rail. Party of No. Then Invisible Friend. And out wide is Wild River Wolf. Well spotted from fifth is Strong Attitude. Now Thelonious makes up ground and well back to Rayo Colorado. It's Blind Trust, a half length better than Invisible Friend. Party of No racing in the middle. Beginning to tire is Wild River Wolf, saving ground. Thelonious is ranging into contention at the quarter pole. Then we go back to Strong Attitude and Rayo, Colorado. They swing for home and it's Blind Trust on top. Blind Trust has the lead over Invisible Friend. Trying to come back on between them is Party of No and out wide. Here comes Thelonious, but Blind Trust continues to lead at the eighth pole. It's Blind Trust up by two. Thelonious is into second. Party of No trying to re-rally, but they still have to make up three lengths on Blind Trust. Blind Trust is led from the inside the whole way and it's going to be Blind Trust. Blind Trust wins over a closing Thelonious, then Party of No, Invisible Friend, 119 and 4. Unofficial in race one or race five, the winner is number one, Blind Trust. Second was three, Thelonious. Third, number six, Party of No. And fourth, number seven, Invisible Friend. Unofficial race five order is one, three, six, and seven.
And returning to the walking ring winner's circle, the unofficial race five winner, number one, Blind Trust. Blind Trust is a four-year-old gray or roan gelding by Frack Daddy out of Me Love. Bred in Ontario by Michael Byrne. Ridden to victory today by Christopher Husbands for trainer Claudia Rabstein and owner John Grinsteins. A third lifetime win for Blind Trust. He goes wire to wire in the slop, covering the six and one half furlongs in one nineteen and four. Race five is official, prices are up. The winner, number one, Blind Trust, 1060, 530, and 350. Number three, Thelonious, 1090, and 560. Number six, Party of No, 320. The $2 Exacta, 13, $80.70. $1 Try, 136, $177.20. $1 Super, one three six seven, four hundred and forty eight dollars and fifteen cents. Two dollar double, eight one, thirty dollars and thirty cents. One dollar pick three, seventy nine dollars and seventy five cents. The one dollar early pick four, four hundred and sixty five dollars and thirty five cents. And the one dollar early pick five, three hundred and thirty seven dollars and forty five cents for four out of five. Early pick five pays on four out of five winners. Final pick three of the day coming up in race six. We have 20 minutes to post. Honeymoon Suite will be performing at Fort Erie on Saturday, September 17th, featuring Leah Marlene and the trip. This is a special ticketed fundraiser for COPE. You can get your tickets now at customer service or online at eventbrite.ca. You can also pick them up at Fort Erie Rona. We love Fort Erie Night, sponsored by Fort Erie Rona. Changes for the upcoming sixth race. Overweight on number two, Artie's All In. Two pounds over at 120 pounds. Number three, MC Jackhammer. One pound over at 119 pounds. And number six, Jamaican Jimmy. Five pounds over at 123 pounds. 18 minutes to post for race number six.
Horses are making their way on track for today's sixth race. Race six is an allowance race for three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races, going six furlongs on the main track. Race six offers win, play, show, exactor, 20 cent try, double, 20 cent super, and 20 cent pick three wagering. Post parade for race six, number one is Quiet Wyatt. Juan Crawford rides for trainer Jeff Voice and owners Robin Voice, Casey Voice, and Greg Atho. Two is Artie's All In. Jeffrey Alderson rides for trainer Anthony Alderson and owner Malcolm Alderson. Number three is MC Jackhammer. Chris Husband's in the saddle for trainer Joe Humber and owner Church Street Stables. Number four is Dr. Wu, Kirk Johnson pilots for owner trainer Dale Powell. Number five is We Want Action, Omar Marino rides for owner trainer Sharon Chicago. Take note that We Want Action will race with inserts. Number six is Jamaican Jimmy, Ishmael Mascara has the call for trainer Mark Fournier and owner R.W. McGillivray. And number seven is Spiral Storm. Melanie Pinto rides for trainer Dale Powell, who owns in partnership with Anika Murray. Four minutes to post for race number six. Two minutes to post.
Starting gate taking position, not too much time left to get your race six wagers in. Set to begin loading for race six, it is post time. First to go up will be Quiet Wyatt with Juan Crawford. Artie's all in with Jeffrey Alderson on the heels of a 22 to one upset a couple of weeks ago. MC Jack Hammer with Chris Husbands. The four to five favorite is Dr. Wu with Kirk Johnson going up to gate four. We Want Action with Omar Marino. We Want Action goes up. Jamaican Jimmy with Ishmael Mascara. Steps in. Last up will be the gray Spiral Storm with Melanie Pinto. And we're all set. They're off. Artie's all in, got out a little slowly. MC Jackhammer is showing speed from the outside. Jamaican Jimmy is there. Coming up the rail is Quiet Wyatt. Between horses, Dr. Wu. Then we go back one and a half to We Want Action. Artie's all in. And then three back to the trailer, Spiral Storm. Down the back stretch they go. It's MC Jackhammer, a neck better than Quiet Wyatt from the rail. We go back to Jamaican Jimmy, Artie's all in. Dr. Wu out wide as we want action. And then about five more to Spiral Storm. The quarter was 23 flat. Quiet Wyatt has come up the rail to start dueling with MC Jackhammer. They're head and head. Jamaican Jimmy asked for a little more from third, creeping closer. Dr. Wu races between horses. Out wide as we want action. Along the fence, Artie's all in. And Spiral Storm continues to trail. With a quarter of a mile to go, MC Jackhammer is back with the head in front of Quiet Wyatt. They went the half in 46 and 4. Top of the stretch, Jamaican Jimmy looms into contention. Dr. Wu swings to the outside. He needs to do better. It is Quiet Wyatt on top. MC Jackhammer between horses. Jamaican Jimmy finishing, but Quiet Wyatt is going best of all in the final 16th. It is Quiet Wyatt making noise in the sixth. Quiet Wyatt wins by three. Jamaican Jimmy, then Dr. Wu and MC Jackhammer in 112 flat. Unofficial in race six, the winner is number one, Quiet Wyatt. Second is number six, Jamaican Jimmy. Third, number four, Dr. Wu. And fourth, number three, MC Jackhammer. Unofficial race six order is one, six, four, and three.
And now returning to the infield winner's circle, the unofficial race six winner, number one, Quiet Wyatt. Quiet Wyatt is a three-year-old bay gelding by silent name out of Just Humor Me. Bred in Ontario by Dr. Brian Van Arum. Ridden to victory today by Juan Crawford for trainer Jeff Voice, a training double for Jeff Voice. For owners, Robin Voice, Casey Voice, and Greg Atto. That's a second lifetime win and five tries for Quiet Wyatt. Completing the six furlongs today in 112 flat. Race six is official, prices are up. The winner, number one, Quiet Wyatt, 990, 430, and 250. Number six, Jamaican Jimmy, 320 and 230. And number four, Dr. Wu, 230. The one the two dollar exacta, one six, thirty dollars and thirty cents. One dollar try, one six four, fifty one dollars and twenty five cents. One dollar super, one six four three, two hundred and one dollars and ten cents. Two dollar double, a pair of ones, sixty six dollars and ten cents. And the one dollar pick three, seventy three dollars and eighty cents. Off the turf for race number seven, late double coming up in twenty one minutes. The post-position draw for the 87th Prince of Wales Stakes will be taking place on Thursday, September 8th at 12 p.m. If you can't make it out to the track for the post-draw, you can tune in via live stream on our website, FortErieRacing.com. The 87th running of the Prince of Wales Stakes, second jewel of the OLG Canadian Triple Crown, will take place on Tuesday, September 13th. Be sure to come out for the highlight of the Fort Erie season. First post is 105. Changes for the upcoming seventh race. We are off the turf. Steward Scratch, the number one, Benedette's Lady. Steward Scratch, the number three, Swirling Candy. Vet Scratch, the number six, Eight Speed. Overweight on the number four, Silent Guru, one pound over at 121 pounds. And Steward Scratch, the number eight, Capoeira. There will be no show and no Superfecta wagering in today's seventh race. 19 minutes to post.
Horses are making their way on track for today's seventh race. Race seven is a starter optional claiming race for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have started for a claiming price of 5,000 or less in the last two years, or going for a claiming price of $10,000. We are off the turf. Race seven will now be five furlongs over the main track. Race seven offers win place, exactor, 20 cent try and double wagering, no show and no superfecta wagering in race seven. Take note that number five, Gimbala, will race with inserts. Inserts on the number five. Post parade for race seven, scratch the one, number two is Frerit. Juan Crawford rides for trainer Mark Fournier, who owns with partners. Scratch the three, number four is Silent Guru. Helen Vanek in the saddle for trainer Jeff Voice and owner Robin Voice. Number five is Gimbala. Brandon Boulanger in the saddle for trainer John Sims, who owns in partnership with Society Girl. Melanie Pinto has the call for trainer Julie Mathis and owner Bruno Schickadans. Scratch the number eight, we have five minutes to post for race seven, late double wagering offered here. Three minutes to post. Starting gate making its way towards the five furlong marker. We have two minutes to post for race number seven.
One minute to post. Race 7 field is behind the gate. It is now post time. Going up first will be Frerit with Juan Crawford. Silent Guru with Helen Vanek. Gimbala with Brandon Boulanger and High Society Girl and Melanie Pinto will complete the quartet. We are all set. They're off. They broke in a clean line. They're all showing speed from the rail. Frerit from the outside High Society Girl. Now Gimbala is, em is emerging from the middle to put her head in front. It's Gimbala, a neck better than High Society Girl. Frerit is on the rail, and now Silent Guru takes back to last as they race into the turn. The four of them are spread out by about three lengths, with Gimbala a length on top past the three-eighths pole. The quarter was 22-3. and three. It's Gimbala cruising along on the lead. Her lead is up to two over High Society Girl. Frerit skims the rail, and then another two back to Silent Guru. With less than a quarter of a mile left to go, Gimbala is looking to go all the way. She's still on top by two. Frerit trying to rally up the inside. High Society Girl is tired, and Silent Guru hasn't reached the pack yet. It is Gimbala trying to go all the way and getting stronger as they go. Gimbala, she is going best in the final 16th. She's going to win quite comfortably with Brandon Boulanger. It's all Gimbala. Frerit was second, then High Society Girl and Silent Guru in 58 and 2. Unofficial in race seven, the winner is number five, Gimbala. Second, number two, Frerit. Third, number seven, High Society Girl. And fourth, number four, Silent Guru. Unofficial race seven order is five, two, seven, four.
Race seven is now official. And now returning to the walking ring winner's circle, the official race seven winner, number five, Gimbala. Gimbala is a seven-year-old dark bay or brown mare by Spaniard out of Hypocritical. Bred in Ontario by Northern Dawn Stables Incorporated. Ridden to victory today by Brandon Boulanger for time win for the seven-year-old Gimbala who covered the five furlongs in 58 and two. Winner Circle presentation for race seven. Sponsored by Ray Rosatani, Remax Niagara Realty. Prices are up for race seven. The winner, number five, Gimbala, 570 and 310. There was no show wagering in race seven. Number two, Frerit, 320. $2 exacta, 52, $18.20. $1 try, 527, $13.10. The $2 double, 15, $45.40. And the $1 pick three, $135.30. Jackpot high five wagering coming up in the eighth. The carryover is over $14,000. 20 minutes to post. So once again, we have the jackpot high five here in race number eight. Be the only winning ticket to collect the whole jackpot. The current carryover, $14,863.63. Changes for the upcoming eighth race. Vet scratch the number five, correlate, take out the five. Steward scratch the number six, ace destroyer, take out the six. And an overweight on the number eight, Pearl Arana. Three pounds over, now 123 pounds. 19 minutes to post.
Nothing comes close to this. Elegant avatars of speed, sprinting towards glory. Hands grip with white-knuckled hope. Seats become decoration. As fearless drivers take flight, and it's closer than you think. Visit OntarioRacing.com.
Horses are making their way on track for tonight's eighth and final race. Race eight is a starter optional claiming race for three-year-olds and up, which have started for a claiming price of 5,000 or less in the last two years, or going for a claiming price of $10,000. We're going to go six and one half furlongs on the main track. Race eight offers win play show, exactor, 20 cent try, 20 cent super, and 20 cent jackpot high five wagering. Take note that number four, Jack Beanstalk, will race with inserts. Inserts on the number four. Post parade for race eight, number one is Dilettante. Helen Vanek rides for owner trainer Elliot Sullivan. Two is the only solution. Leo Salas rides for trainer by Raganoth and owner Centennial Farms Niagara Incorporated. Number three is Fafa -Fa Fui. Juan Crawford in the saddle for trainer Sharon Chicado and owner Jim Vettier. Four is Jack Beanstalk. Mark Lee Buchanan rides for owner-trainer Desmond Maynard. Scratch numbers five and six. Number seven is Tragically Kewick. Melanie Pinto rides for trainer Julie Mathis and owners Joseph and Charles Lecano. Eight is Perlarana. Ishmael Mascara rides for trainer J Gary Shadobiak and owner Maureen Hewitt-Top. And rounding out the field, number nine, Gold Venture. Chris Husbands rides for trainer Danny Wills and owner Jeannie Ryan. Four minutes to post for race eight, jackpot high five, carry over $14,863. Two minutes to post.
Field for race eight is heading into the chute. Last call to get your race eight wagers in. Field begins to head behind the starting gate for race eight. It is now post time. The current favorite at two to one is number one, Dilettante. Also taking money are number seven, Tragically Quick. Numbers three and nine also there. Dilettante and Helen Vanek, the first to go up. The only solution with Leo Salas. Jack Beanstalk goes in with Mark Lee Buchanan. Fafa Fui with Juan Crawford. Pearl Arana is going to come up without the rider, Ishmael Mascara, to reunite with his mount. Gold Venture and Chris Husbands go to the outside. The last to go up will be Tragically Quick with Melanie Pinto. All set for the nightcap. They're off. Jack Beanstalk was out sharply. Dilettante also getting good early position and now ridden along from the outside is Tragically Quick with the only solution splitting horses. Then we go back to Gold Venture, Fa Fa Fui, and the early trailer is going to be Pearl Arana. Jack Beanstalk is a half length better than Tragically Quick past the five furlong pole. These two have opened up two and a half on the only solution. Dilettante along the rail past an opening quarter and 23 flat. In fifth is Fafa Fa Fui with Gold Venture to his outside and then another two back to Pearl Arana. As they go into the turn, Jack Beanstalk is cleared. He's about two lengths better than Tragically Quick. Dilettante is into third, but he comes off the rail, leaving room for the only solution. Fa Fa Fui and Gold Venture continue to race together, about three lengths better than Pearl Arana. Midway around the turn, Jack Beanstalk is on top of Tragically Quick. These two have opened up about three on the rest of the field. The only solution looking for room. He angles off of the rail with Dilettante. Gold Venture out wider, but Jack Beanstalk is getting away from them down the stretch. It's Jack Beanstalk up by three. Tragically Quick trying from second. Dilettante is rallying with the only solution but they still have a lot of work to do to get Jack Beanstalk. He's opened up four and he's not stopping. It's all Jack Beanstalk to win the finale. Jack Beanstalk only over Tragically Quick, then Dilettante and the only solution. 118 and one. Unofficial in race eight, the winner is number four, Jack Beanstalk. Second is number seven, Tragically Quick. Third, number one, Dilettante. And fourth, number two, D Only Solution. We have a photo for fifth for the jackpot high five. But your unofficial race eight order is four, seven, one, two.
Now returning to the walking ring winner's circle, the unofficial race eight winner, number four, Jack Beanstalk. Jack Beanstalk is a five-year-old bay gelding by Jack Milton out of Sam's Roman Affair. Bred in Kentucky by Paul Knapper. Ridden to victory today by Mark Lee Buchanan for owner-trainer Desmond Maynard. That's a fifth lifetime win for Jack Beanstalk, second in a row. Jack Beanstalk with a front-stepping win, covering the six and one-half furlongs in 118 and one. Race 8 is now official. Prices are up. The winner, number 4, Jack Beanstalk, $12, 540 and 350. Number 7, Tragically Quick, 440 and 290. And number 1, Dilettante, 250. The $2 Exacta, 47, $34.30. $1 Tri, 471. $37.45. $1 Super, $4712, $308.80. We had multiple winning tickets in the high five. 47129 returns $795.05. The carryover into Monday's card of racing will be $16,421.98. $2 Double, $54, $41.40. $1 pick three, $136.55. $1 pick four, $841.65. And the $1 pick five, $1,788.50. And on screen now is the fifth place photo for race number eight for the jackpot high five players. Number nine, Gold Venture, just a nose better than number three, Fatha Fui. Race eight, fifth place photo is on screen now. We had a couple of claims in race number eight. Number seven, Tragically Quick, was claimed by new owner Lisa Schutten and moves to the barn of trainer Roy Agostino. Also claimed out of race eight was number one, Dilettante, claimed by new owner Deborah Fletcher for trainer Martin Drexler. Jackpot High Five continues to build. Monday's carryover will be $16,421 and 98 cents. Our fall racing schedule begins next week at Fort Erie. Mondays and Tuesdays first post will be 105. Check out our website forterieracing.com, live video streaming of all the races if you can't make it out to the track, and you can find all of our race replays. Honeymoon Suite will be performing at Fort Erie on Saturday, September 17th, featuring Leah Marlene and the trip a special ticketed fundraiser for COPE. You can get your tickets at customer service or online at eventbrite.ca. Eventbrite you can also pick them up at Fort Erie Rona. We Love Fort Erie Night is sponsored by Fort Erie Rona. Be sure to come out to the races on Labor Day, Monday, September 5th, for the annual running of the Puss in Boots Cup. Who will have to take the plunge into the, into the infield pond? Post position draw for the Prince of Wales Stakes will be on Thursday, September 8th at 12 p.m. If you can't make it out for the draw, tune in on the live stream on our website. The Prince of Wales Stakes will be held on Tuesday, September 13th. First post 105, second jewel of the OLG Canadian Triple Crown. 
Become a member of HPIBet.com today. Get $100 when you bet $100, plus your first bet is on us. Be sure to book your table for the Turfside Dining Room open on live racing days. Reservations are strongly recommended. Tune into your TV Niagara for the Ford Erie Race Replay Show, Channel 700, Thursdays and Saturdays at 10 p.m. If you're on track with us tonight, be sure to stick around for the free concert featuring Split Second, their only Ford Erie performance this summer. Special thanks to concert sponsor Ray Rosatani, Remax Niagara Realty. And with that, that concludes the live racing from here at Fort Erie Racetrack today. We want to thank everybody for making it for joining us today. If you're on track with us, be sure to stick around and enjoy the concert from Split Second. If you joined us off-site via the internet or simulcast wagering, we appreciate you making us part of your day. From all of us here at Fort Erie, thank you very much. We'll see you back on Monday.